Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and you're watching Gadget Match. 2017 is the year of the borderless smartphone. All the best phones from all the major brands have edge-to-edge -edge displays. But you know what? Bezel-less displays are no longer just a high-end feature. Take this phone, for example. This is our Vivo V7 Plus unboxing and review. Let's get straight to it. Notice instead of perfect selfie, it now says clearer selfie because nobody's perfect. It's also interesting to note the V7 Plus is the official smartphone of World Cup 2018. Now let's break off the seal and open up the box. First up is the V7 Plus itself. You won't notice anything special until you boot up the phone, so let's fast forward to that part. Sorry, couldn't wait. As you can see, the V7 Plus's standout feature is its near borderless display, the first on a Vivo phone. Now back to our unboxing. Let's lift up this tray, a box with a SIM card ejector tool, and inside, a clear jelly case. Further inside, you'll find headphones, micro USB cable, and a USB wall charger. And now, onto our review. The V7 Plus replaces the V5 Plus and the V3 Max before that. While this phone isn't necessarily thinner or lighter, its borderless display gives it a distinct and much updated look. While its predecessors had 5.5 inch displays, the V7 Plus squeezes in a larger 6 inch display. And I've gotta say, it changes the way you feel about the phone. Brands do borderless displays differently. On the V7 Plus, there's a space up top for the selfie camera and a small chin down below. While Vivo claims it's figured out how to embed a fingerprint sensor underneath the display, this phone doesn't have that tech just yet. Instead, the fingerprint sensor has been moved to the back of the phone. It's a nice convenient spot just above the Vivo logo and it's reachable even by short fingers. Volume rocker and home buttons are on the right hand side of the device and on the left, a dual nano SIM card and micro SD card tray. You might recall the V5 Plus did not have provisions for expandable storage. And I know how important this feature is for Vivo's user base, so we're pretty glad to see it make a comeback. On the bottom of the phone, there's a headphone jack, microphone, micro USB port, and speaker grills. Like any other Vivo smartphone, the fingerprint sensor is superbly fast. Just a quick tap unlocks the phone. Apart from that, Vivo is also introducing its take on facial recognition. To set it up, go into Settings, Fingerprint, Face, and Password, and then Face. Once set up, press the power button to initiate the scan. In ideal scenarios, unlock times are quick also, but it's not as reliable as the fingerprint sensor. Also, there's no way to improve scans by creating new models under different lighting conditions like we did on the LG Q6. So if you're in a darker room, facial recognition might not always work. Thankfully, you can have both options on at the same time, so you can use either one depending on which is best for that particular scenario. Like the V5 Plus, the V7 Plus has a 16 megapixel main camera with an f2.0 lens. While on paper the specs are the same, photos we shot on auto came out different. The V7 Plus produced warmer photos, while the V5 Plus produced more natural photos. Take a look at more sample shots. Up front, it's a whole different story. Instead of two selfie cameras like on the V5 Plus, the V7 Plus only has one 24 megapixel front camera. The benefit of having two cameras is depth sensing, using that second camera to determine which is the subject in the foreground and which is the background, and creating that creamy, blurry background effect like on a DSLR. Because it doesn't have that second camera, the V7 Plus uses software to artificially create that blur effect and for the most part, does a good job. But there are times when the software can't figure out which is subject and what is background, creating weird cutouts like this. 
the V5 Plus did a way better job in this scenario. Also, because it has two cameras, you can adjust the amount of blur while taking the shot on the V5 Plus. Sans any beauty modes and bokeh, both phones take great selfies outdoors. Opposite to its main camera performance, the V7 Plus has a more natural tone. The V5 Plus selfies are more warm. At night, with less available light, the V7 Plus takes better, sharper photos, albeit with more grain. The front-facing flash is still there. It's more of a steady fill light because it stays illuminated while you take the shot. We're all about promoting a positive body image, but it has to be said. Beauty mode also allows you to make yourselves look taller in photographs. I'm sure our beauty and lifestyle expert Issa will have more thoughts and you can read all about it on gadgetmatch.com. Another cool feature, face beauty can now be used during video calls. So say you're on a Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp video chat with someone you want to impress, you can look like this. Just a messenger, folks. Don't shoot the messenger. While only a mid-range phone, the V7 Plus runs on a pretty decent spec sheet with an ample amount of processing power, memory, and storage. Games run quick, and switching between multiple apps is lag-free. Battery capacity is larger than on previous models. In our tests, we got a full day of average use and then some. Fast charging is also supported. You can go from 0 to 100% in just over 2 hours. Another spec worthy of note is its built-in hi-fi audio chip. If you listen to lossless music files and have a hi-fi headset to support it, then Vivo promises a more immersive audio experience. The Vivo V7 Plus runs Android's Nougat out of the box. On top of that is Vivo's FunTouch OS. The OS is clean and customizable. You can rearrange the on-screen buttons, for example, even make them look like the square, triangle, and circle symbols used on stock Android. Screen recordings now include audio. And there is also App Clone, which lets you run two instances of WhatsApp, WeChat, and Viber. So, is the Vivo V7 Plus your gadget match. If you bought a smartphone in the last year, then you can probably skip this one. But that's not saying that this phone is not a great mid-range smartphone. In fact, it's easily earned the gadget match seal of approval. And I love that even at this price point, it looks and feels like a high-end smartphone from 2017. The V7 Plus is currently available in India and the Philippines for roughly about 350 US dollars. It should be rolling out to other Southeast Asian markets very soon. If you're in the market for a new phone and don't necessarily want to spend a lot of money, then the V7 Plus is definitely a phone to consider. In its price range, other competitors are the Oppo F3 Plus, the Samsung Galaxy A5 2017, and the Zenfone 4 Selfie Pro, all of which are a little bit more expensive. And with that in mind, it's hard not to see this phone as the front runner in that space. Because of its borderless display, Display, the Vivo V7 Plus has set itself apart for now. And that was our Vivo V7 Plus unboxing and review. For more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, follow Gadget Match on social media, and make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.